Thank you and welcome back to yet another episode for season two. It is our finale, however, but don't worry. We will be back at the beginning of the new year, 2016, with a brand new season with new recipes to share with uh, you and your friends and family. And we will bring back the holiday special this next season uh, so that you can be ready for your Easter dinner. And I have a lot of new recipes to show you. So I'm excited about that. But let's get down to business. I have these uh, banana muffins I'm going to show you, as well as something to cool you down, a berry protein blast smoothie. It is delicious, has all of your essential vitamins in it, including protein powder, flax powder, and all types of different berries and fruits. So you have a lot to look forward to. All right, so without more, more further ado, let's get to it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually mix the dry ingredients first. So we have one and a half cups of whole wheat flour. This is whole wheat flour. Um, it's a lot healthier. It's going to be a little heavier, but it definitely uh, doesn't take away from the moistness or the deliciousness of these muffins. So we're going to take one and a half cups flour. Then we're going to do one teaspoon cinnamon a dash of nutmeg, an eighth of a teaspoon of pumpkin spice, one half teaspoon salt, and one teaspoon baking soda. Okay, so we're going to mix this up until it's well mixed. Basically, that just means until all of the cinnamon and baking soda is has disappeared. You can't tell that it's in there. There we go. The flour looks just like it did before I put all the ingredients in. All right. So now what we're going to do is we are going to do what's called the wet mixture. It's going to include the butter and the sugar. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're putting in one half cup sugar and one half cup butter, basically a stick. And I've softened it to room temperature. And we're going to blend this, or I should rather say cream this. When you do sugar and butter together, you're creaming it into a smooth, creamy mixture. So while I'm creaming this, I'm going to just send it over to Tim. He's going to do his final segment for the season. What do you have for us, Tim? Oh, hello there. Welcome to another exciting episode of In the Know with Tim. I'm just sitting here waiting for my friend to join me for a good game of checkers. Today we're talking about whole wheat. Whole wheat. No holes in it. It's all whole. <laughs> There's no white substance in the whole wheat bread. So let's get started and we'll take you a little information about whole wheat. So health benefits for whole wheat products include to demote diabetes type 2, gallstones, and also health benefits for women to help them lose weight. And even, you know, even it certainly says just women only, I'm sure it has great health benefits for men as well to help them uh, lose a little bit of inches on those waistlines. So dating back to 1941 was when the first year is when white bread was incorporating so many different products of V1s, zinc, copper. They were incorporating those out of the bread and making them so starchy and fatty in the white products and that's why whole wheat is so good for you because they brought those products right back into it and that's why whole wheat is a lot better than white products today. All right y'all, so the demand for wheat products has dropped in the last decade by 10%. However, if you want a more healthier wheat diet, it has increased significantly in amount 
And if you want a little bit more of a wheat diet, try more of a Mediterranean Indian style diet and um, that way it incorporates more brown foods, whole wheat products into your diet. And I just hope you enjoy this rest of this cooking segment with Kevin in the kitchen and have a great rest of your cooking experience and we'll see you next time. for you today about the banana. Did you know Americans eat about 3.2 billion pounds a year of bananas? That's about 304 a second. That's crazy. But sadly, we waste about 25% of the bananas we purchase back to the landfills. Let's learn some other new things. So, most bananas are grown about 30 degrees around the equator of our Earth. But the crazy thing is they pick them green so that when they're transporting, they can be refrigerated. And once they reach their destinations, they spray ethanol gas to create a yellow color on them. The same thing happens with oranges. So be careful when you're picking your bananas, whether you're growing organic or you're gonna go the mainstream. So what you can do with those banana pills is amazing. There's tons of things. One of the biggest ones is you can use them for planting your plants outside. So when you're starting up your tomato plants, you wrap the banana peel right around the base of that plant and it'll soak up the nutrients while the plant grows. If you're not starting your own plants, don't worry. You can soak the ripened used banana peels in water, kind of creating this base. To those parts of the banana water, you add five more parts of water and water your plants regularly to get those same nutrients. Now, if you don't want to do any of that, but you still want to have that green kind of thing going, try composting your banana peels. They break down great. They create a little bit of menthol gas, which will kind of give it a stench, but it has so many nutrient dents in those banana peels. Why put those to waste? Now, I recommend the fact that you can use these in some of your own personal life items on your body. For instance, it's bug season. There's tons of mosquitoes out. Take a used banana peel, wipe it on your rash or your bug bite spot, and it'll help with the itching. But if you wanna try some other uses, you can whiten your teeth with a banana peel. It's a great thing to do when you forgot that toothbrush at home. Take your used banana peel, inside, not out. Rub that on your teeth, it'll help whiten and clean them. Or if you're really into nutrition, try eating your banana peel. It is extremely full of nutrients, minerals, and essential micronutrients that you need for life. Although I would recommend rinsing the peel because it can be covered in those pesticides. So what are we going to do with all those over ripened bananas? That's 25%. Well, there's great things you can do. You can use them in baking. I like to use them not only in my banana breads, but they're a great substitute for sugars and fats. Depending on the recipe, you can increase your baking sodas and flours or whole grains to increase that so it's not so runny. It's just about finding the consistency that you can use to substitute as a sweetener. I also recommend that you can use the overripe bananas because they are so dense in things that fight and help boost up your immune system and other diseases like cancer that are out there. Japan has done multiple studies on these things and find that the brown banana is the banana to go with. So don't waste your bananas, enjoy your potassium, magnesium, B6, and why not make a milkshake? Have a good one guys. Back to you Kev. And welcome back. So just in time, we just finished creaming this. If you take a look, it's very nice and whipped and uh, it's, it's made almost kind of like a dough-like substance. That's what you want. All right, so what we're gonna add now is we're gonna take two eggs, crack them in. And one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And we're going to mix this in well now. may take a little bit because it's a liquid substance trying to go to, into more of a um, solid dough. Gradually increase the speed. Right. 
perfect. It's almost made kind of like a cake batter like look to it. So now what we're going to add in is the flour mixture that we did earlier. Start it off on low or else you'll get um, quite a surprise with the flour bursting up towards you. It's going to be thick, but it will kind of soften up when you add the sour cream and the bananas. Okay. So what I've taken here is four ripe bananas. You can, if you don't already have bananas that have ripened in your kitchen, uh, you can find a uh, ripened uh, reduced price packages at Roth's uh, for 39 cents a pound and it, they, they're perfect that's that's what I did here and I'm, I'll go ahead and just throw these into a bowl you want to mash them before you add them makes it a little easier to mix in sometimes they may just even fall apart in your hand because they're so ripened uh, as we learned in Julie's segment not too long ago, bananas get riper uh, or sweeter as they ripen. And so uh, you definitely, the browner the better when it comes to banana bread. I just have a potato masher that I'm going to use here. If you like um, less uh, sugar used in breads and whatnot, uh, just get super ripe bananas. And you can cut the sugar down to maybe even a third of a cup. You don't have to do a half cup like I'm doing. Some people like it really sweet, so in addition to ripe bananas, they'll do a cup of sugar. Uh, but I think that's just too much. Now, it doesn't have to be perfectly mashed because it will get blended. Now it's just kind of like a, I don't know what you call it, a banana puree mash here. Should just slide right down in there. All right. So I'm going to mix those in. Just until well blended. And then now we're going to add our final ingredient, half a cup of sour cream. I know you cut you probably think sour cream in bread, but it acts really does add moistness to the bread. So while I'm letting that cream, let's send it to our comment page. Send us any questions you might have. has had ample time now to to kind of whip it up and it's very airy you can tell that it's a very moist dough um, you can tell just by the way that it's it's uh, just dropping off of the mixer head here I don't have to do much help to it so this is ready now to go into the muffin cup all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray each of the muffin tins uh, with a coconut oil spray. As we learned um, again from uh, Julie just a few seconds ago, 
Coconut oil is probably one of the best oils to bake with or cook with for that matter. It holds um, together under higher heats um, better than olive oil, canola oil, um, the, those like oils. Um, or you can use muffin tins, uh, liners as well. But I'm choosing to do the, the spray. We're just going to do a quick spray in each one, kind of doing a circle motion. The other reason why I like coconut oil is that it does add a little bit of a sweetness flavor. I, I think it's really good with baked goods. I haven't really found a, um, you know, a frying dish that I like with coconut oil. It, it definitely does give a coconut flavor. I've tried it with fried chicken. It, it was okay, but not my favorite. So we're going to put in about two scoops into each tin because these will expand as they cook, bake. And by the way, talking about baking, you should have the oven preheated to 350 degrees. These make excellent bread loaves as well. Um, I like the muffins. I think it uh, it's just easier to grab and go instead of having to slice slice a piece and and to just uh, try to keep it from drying out so while I keep filling up these tins I, let, let's just uh, take time to give you a trivia question the final of the year let's see if you can get this Welcome back. Did you get stumped by that trivia? We'll see here in just a few minutes. We'll have the answer for you. So I got all these filled now. I didn't quite get two dozen. Um, if you want two dozen, you can make your muffins just a little bit smaller. And you're going to cook them for about 20 minutes. Um, as we learned in a segment a few weeks ago, uh, the darker metal, of course, is going to cook faster. Um, but yeah, check in 20 minutes. T test with the toothpick. And you may just need to um, bake them in additional like five minute increments and keep checking them because you don't want to over bake muffins, they get dry. So let's go ahead and put these in. Set the timer. All right, so now that those are baking, I'm going to show you my berry protein glass smoothie. Okay, so I'm going to be using a Nutribullet. I really like the Nutribullet. It's easy to use, perfect serving size. When I would use, um, you know, traditional blenders, I tend to make too much smoothie and just go to waste. So I'm just using a select variety of fruits, um, just what I have on hand. You can, you're more than welcome to add any other things like kiwi or uh, raspberries, um, you know, different fruits, uh, different vegetables for that matter. But I'm just making a, a smoothie from what I have here. We got pineapple, um, strawberries, and then I did get uh, one of my favorite companies here locally, Willamette Valley Fruit Co. Uh, I got one of their uh, mixes called Berry Bonanza. It has bananas, marionberries, and strawberries in a pack. Easy to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in just a, a few of these. Some more strawberries. You can never have too many strawberries in a smoothie. Some pineapple for sweetness. I'm going to put a full banana in. I love bananas in my smoothies. I feel like it just gives a smoothie um, body. Okay. And then we're going to put in some spinach. You can put arugula in. You can put kale. Um, but this is just what I had on hand. Um, now, for a liquid in there, you can put almond milk, which I do have some almond milk here, but I may use maple water. It, uh, it actually is pretty good. It's sweet, but not too sweet. You can put milk, 
Uh, you can just put plain water in. Uh, and then I'll just shake it a little bit more. I love to put yogurt in my smoothies. Um, unfortunately though, I uh, had someone eat what yogurt I had left. So this is not gonna have yogurt in it, but it should still be good. So you only wanna put liquid up to about just under half of what you have in there. If you're not using frozen fruit, say you're using only fresh fruit, you might need to add some ice cubes to this smoothie to give it body and pre prevent it from being very liquidy. Um, as it is, I'm using mostly frozen fruits, so I shouldn't need that. So I'm gonna start off with pulsing it first. Okay, and while I have that continue to mix, let's send it to Julie for her final segment of the season. Julie? Hello. Kevin asked me to do some research on blueberries. Now I knew that they tasted good and supposedly they were good for you. But what I found out really kind of surprised me. Just one cup of blueberries gives you 24% of your vitamin C content. It also provides for folate and vitamin E. There was so many different uh, benefits and antioxidants that you get from blueberries. But there were so many, I'm going to actually have to read it. Um, it helps maintain healthy bones, lowers blood pressure, helps manage diabetes, it wards off heart disease, prevents cancer, improves mental health. It actually is good uh, to help prevent Parkinson's disease and help ward off cognitive decline, healthy digestion. Now here's the part that I like. Uh, it's good for weight loss and it provides, I think, it mentioned about so much fiber that you get from it. It's like 3.9 grams of fiber for a one cup serving. Plus, it helps fight wrinkles. I tell you, I think blueberries is going to be my next favorite best food. So, I wish you a wonderful summer. Try to incorporate more blueberries in smoothies. You can do them in muffins, pancakes. You can even put them in your salad. And I hope you have a wonderful summer, and we'll see you next season. Until then, try to eat as many blueberries as possible. Mm. And welcome back. So we got it uh, blended. You want to make sure it's well blended because um, I like to drink my smoothies with a straw. And if there's clumps in there, it's going to clog up the straw and just make it not really that good of an experience. And we'll pour some right in here it has good body and that is going to be a refreshing treat on a very hot day um, or even during a fall day just being inside it's good to have smoothies all year round lots of vitamins so let's uh while we wait for the banana muffins i'm going to send it away one last time for that trivia answer let's see if you got it right Welcome back. Did you get it right? I hope you did. You know, I, I've kind of seen this season as just an education, uh, like a class. And I hope that you've learned through this whole process and, and feel a little bit more confident in the kitchen. Uh, so I, um, I'm going to offer some suggestions you can do with the smoothie, like uh, alternatives. This is already very healthy for you, but if you want it to be almost like a full meal, uh, to where it has every vitamin you need. You can always add in some fiber. You can add in some protein. Uh, you can add hemp powder. And you can add f ground flax powder. Uh, you can also do coconut water. There's just a million different things you can do. Um, in, in fact, I'm going to uh, make another smoothie for the uh, studio audience. And I'm going to put uh, some flax and hemp and fiber in it. 
uh, and protein powder and uh, just to give it a little bit more of a boost. Uh, so let's uh, go over now to the oven because the banana muffins are ready. Right. So I did the toothpick test and I'll do it again here for the camera. If you put it in, you pull it out and it comes out clean. No doughy residue. So these are perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll pull one out. See how they're golden brown on the bottom and they're still soft. You can push them in and run around. Um, as they cool though, they will harden a little bit on the outside, but they'll still be moist on the inside. So this is uh, what you can do for a delicious morning treat. You can do it for an afternoon snack or even a dessert late at night because it is sweet but not as sweet as ice cream or a milkshake. Uh, and so it'll be very satisfying. You can pair it with the smoothie I showed you. And I hope that these add to your repertoire of different recipes that you can try during the summer or the fall months. And until we meet again, come the new year, 2016, when we'll come again with some more recipes and episodes and guest chefs on season three. It's been a great year, and I hope to see you back again. But until then, keep cooking with Kevin.